Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston? What the heck's this? Today we're going to start learning about rocks. Rocks, 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 rocks are awesome. What's the key to rocks? It's this. Boiling, churning, rumbling magma. We're going to talk today about what's called the rock cycle. There's a cycle. It kind of looks like a wheel and at the center of it is what? Boiling, churning magma. Now, let's distinguish magma from lava. The images we just saw were actually lava and not magma because magma is what's buried under the earth. Right, so you've got a mountain, and then maybe this is a volcano, and buried under the mountain, okay, it might be a chamber filled with magma. It's the magma, and it might kind of bubble up in different vents and stuff like that. You think of volcanoes, it's the magma that's the key to the whole thing. Now let's, let's walk through the rock cycle. It all starts as magma. Boiling, churning, super hot. What is magma? It's a liquid, right? It's liquid rock. Can you melt rock? Yes, you can. Super hot, super hot. You've seen it, right? Boiling, churning magma. What happens is it starts as magma. And what happens is it becomes an igneous rock when it turns solid. So when magma turns solid, it becomes what we call an igneous rock. So the word igneous means fire. So you have a fire rock. And then what happens is that igneous rock somehow makes it to the surface. We'll talk more about igneous rocks in our next segment, but it makes its way to the surface somehow and it starts to break down. It erodes and it breaks into small pieces. Water, glaciation, lots of things cause this to happen. And then it gets transported and maybe it flows down a stream on the surface of the earth. And then it deposits in a certain area. And if you get a lot of these little tiny pieces of igneous rocks, they can sometimes combine together and they make what we call a sedimentary rock. Basically a bunch of tiny little particles like sand particles. Sandstone is a classic example of a sedimentary rock. And that sedimentary rock becomes a sedimentary rock and things can happen with that. Again, we'll talk a whole segment on sedimentary rocks. And then the sedimentary rock sometimes undergoes great pressure and temperature and it becomes something called a metamorphic rock. Now a metamorphic rock is a rock that has been metamorphized, right? We use that term metamorphic, it means to change. It's a changed rock when it goes under high pressure and high temperature. But by the way, not only can it just have this erosional thing, but we can have Igneous rocks go under high pressure and temperature, and they too can become a metamorphic rock. So what's happening here, when I go from magma to igneous rock, we call that crystallization. So it's turning in crystallization, does that make sense? It's going from a, from, a, from a liquid, right, to a solid. And, and what's happening, sometimes that sedimentary rock sometimes reaches a place where it starts to melt. So if you melt sedimentary rock, what does it turn back into? Magma, boiling, turning magma. And sometimes metamorphic rocks can also get melted and that's melting, right? And they can turn back into magma and then it can come back to an igneous rock and the cycle can persist. As a note, metamorphic rocks can even turn into sedimentary rocks. We haven't talked about this. They can also go through erosion, transport, and deposition. So if a metamorphic rock, right, goes through this cycle, goes from igneous rock, it always goes, this is the sort of the beginning point right here, right? It goes to an igneous rock, pressure and temperature becomes a metamorphic rock, it can go to melting or it can go back and it can make little tiny particles, it wash down the streams, they can deposit it typically into a seabed, transportation, and then deposition, and it becomes a sedimentary rock, and then the process can continue, and it continues to continue to continue. It's a cycle that's always happening. It happens slowly over many, many, many years, but it all starts as liquid rock underneath the surface of the earth, and then somehow it turns into an igneous rock. And then things happen. So this is called the rock cycle. That rocks, if you will, go through a cycle, a process over thousands and millions actually of years to have this process happen and to create the rocks and the minerals and the things that we see and that we use every day.
Houston, this ain't no problem. The Rock Cycle. Cycle? <laughs> the Rock Cycle. Super simple. Because it starts with what? Boiling, churning, super hot liquid rock, which we call magma. We'll see you in class.